Hi guys, this is Kay from Pod Rainbow Science and in today's episode I'm gonna talk a little bit about HIV testing and something about the window period. I hope you're gonna enjoy it. So let's start! HIV stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus and it is one of the sexually transmitted infections. When HIV is untreated, it leads to AIDS, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. However, nowadays it is very unlikely, of course when you're diagnosed and when you go on treatment, it is very unlikely to get AIDS. It almost never happened. Uh, it is, even though it is sexually transmitted, you have to remember that it can be transmitted also from mother to child during pregnancy or during delivery or even breastfeeding and also it can be transmitted by blood so if you use injection equipment shared with someone else you can get HIV so a pro tip from me if you are a transgender person you and you take hormones don't use equipment shared with other people. Also, if you use injective drugs, same thing. Carry around your own equipment. In 2020, there were about 38 million people living with HIV worldwide. And it is, of course, an estimate number, so we are not sure if this is the right number. Maybe there are 45 million people, or maybe there are 31 million people. We're not sure about it, but according to AIDS, the Joint United Nations Program on HIV and AIDS, it could be 38 or something about it. Uh, also, according to AIDS, about 6 million people worldwide are not aware of their infections. So, it's still a long way to go, but it seems like we've made headways and we're on a good way to really end the HIV epidemic. And when you read something about AIDS or HIV, you can encounter to it a key population term. And the key populations are people who are especially prone to get infected, or people who are at high risk of infection. And in the context of HIV, we can include key populations such as men who have sex with men, or MSM, transgender people, sex workers, people who inject drugs, and people in prison and detention. Uh, and I'm not a great fan of, of the key populations or, or, the whole, or the whole idea of key populations because, you know, you draw attention from one group to another and leave this the first group behind. And, for instance, straight people are never key populations. They, they, were, they have never been and they probably will never be a key population. While, according to CDC, Straight people account for about 24% of new infections last year. So the consequence of speaking of the key population is greater awareness in the key populations, but maybe sometimes a lower awareness in other populations which are also prone to HIV. When it comes to HIV tests, we have uh, three types of tests which are commonly used nowadays. We have antibody tests, we have antibody antigen tests, and we also have an nucleic acid test. Uh, when it comes to antibody tests, it, as you can, as the name can suggest, it looks for antibodies in the blood sample or in the oral fluid sample. But the oral fluid sample tests are very uncommon, so if you have an antibody test, it is very likely that it is from a blood sample. Uh, the most common examples of antibody tests are self-testing kits, so the tests you can order to your house and you can perform it by yourself, and also the rapid test. It is uh, the test you can, the test that gives you an answer in about 15 or 20 minutes. So you can see in very short time if you are HIV positive or negative. But there are also disadvantages of such tests. And one of the greater disadvantages is that you have to wait about 90 days since the exposure to uh, have the credible result of the test. So it takes really, really long. 
Also, public health specialists recommend to use antibody tests only when other types of tests are not available. So, if you are living in a desert and you have no way to get to the HIV facility uh, to perform antibody antigen tests or other types of tests, yes, you can use it. But if you have an option to get uh, the better test, you should definitely go get them. And the second group of tests are antibody antigen tests combined. Uh, they are usually performed on blood from vein. Uh, sometimes they could be used on finger prick blood samples. But as far as I know, uh, the most common practice is to perform it on the blood from a vein. Uh, those tests are better than just antibody tests because they can detect infection after two weeks. Uh, since uh, the potential or the exposure to HIV. Uh, but to be absolutely sure that your negative result is credibly negative, you have to repeat the test after six weeks from the exposure. So to put it in the easiest way I can, if you had an unprotected sex two weeks ago and you come to the facility today, I will recommend doing the test and if the result is positive, it means that yes, you are infected. But if the result is negative, I would have to advise you to come back after four weeks to repeat the test. Because uh, the result you get now, the negative result you get now, could be a false negative. So to be absolutely sure that you're fine, you have to perform the test about 45 days after the exposure. And finally, the NIT test. Uh, nucleic acid test. Uh, it is the uh, right now the greatest test you can have because it can detect infection after uh, about seven up to ten days uh, from uh, the exposure, and it also detects the actual virus in the blood sample. But there is huge disadvantage when it comes to this test. It is very expensive. It is really, really expensive. So, uh, the NIT is never used in screening procedures, but it is, for instance, used when you get the positive, positive result from other tests and now you want to go on treatment. So, the, the doctor will probably use the NIT test because it can not only... Uh, tell us whether you are HIV positive or not, but it can also tell us that uh, it can also assess how much virus is in your is in your blood sample. So it can assess the something we call a viral load, and the viral load is the measure of how much virus is in your blood, uh, and it is widely used uh, in people who are already uh, HIV positive and who are on treatment, for instance, to see if you are reacting to treatment. So right, if you if you have a high viral load and you start treatment, we expect it to be dropping, to be declining. And if the viral load is not declining, even if you're on treatment, it means that we should, for instance, change change the treatment or change the treatment plan. And speaking of treatment, I don't want to brag about treatment too much in today's episode because I'm going to upload another episode on HIV itself and treatment as well. But I just want to tell you that treatment nowadays is 100% effective, it is efficient, so you can be HIV positive and be uh, someone. And speaking of treatment, I don't want to brag too much about treatment in today's episode because I'm going to upload another episode on HIV itself and treatment as well. But I just want to tell you that nowadays treatment is 100% efficient and it is effective and you can just lead a perfectly normal life even if you're HIV positive, because it takes just a few weeks to be undetectable. It means that your viral, viral load is so low that it cannot be detected by normal tests, and so the virus is not destroying your immune system or it doesn't do anything bad inside you. And you also cannot transmit it to someone else even if you have an unprotected sex with the person. The window period is the time between exposure to HIV and the moment we can for sure tell 
that the person is HIV positive or negative. Uh, the window period can vary from person to person, and it can also depend, can be shorter or longer, uh, depending on the test we are using. And why does it vary from person to person? Well, because we all have different immune systems. So it's just simple as that. We have different immune systems, so I can be my my immune system can be more efficient than, for instance, my neighbor's immune system, and we all have different time to produce antibodies. So th that's it. That's just that simple. It can vary from person to person. And why does it depend on test we are using? Well, because as I told you before, we have different types of tests. So if we are using uh, NAT test, it can detect the virus the soonest. So the window period will be around seven days because we are looking, when using NAT, we are looking for the actual virus in the blood sample. Uh, if we're using antibody antigen test, we can uh, say that the window period is as long as 45 days from the exposure because we expect antibodies and antigens to be present in the blood sample within 45 days. And finally, if we use antibody tests, we are looking for only antibodies and antibodies appear the latest in the blood sample. So the window period lasts 90 days when it comes to antibody tests. My takeaway message for you is go test for HIV. Even if you are HIV positive, don't be scared. The treatment is available, treatment is efficient, and it is really, really easy. You usually take one pill a day and that's it. You are perfectly fine. There are no side effects of treatment or, or they are very unlikely to occur, so don't worry. There is nothing wrong related to HIV treatment. Uh, go check or ask someone what kind of test is performed in your HIV facility uh, so that you can know if this is the right moment to, to be tested or you should wait a little longer or maybe you should repeat the test after some time. Uh, remember about window period and if you are not sure about it, just ask the HIV advisor or ask your GP to make sure whether the test has to be repeated. So, thank you for today. I hope it was interesting for you. hope you enjoyed the, the episode. If you have any comments or questions, just drop me an email or a private message on Twitter. I'll be happy to get in touch with you. Take care and share your knowledge.